Hello everyone, this is a quick demo of detecting trivial outliers using some uh, pretty basic statistics. Uh, to start off with, you can find my code in this repository and you can find more complex code particularly being applied to finance and network intrusion detection in this repository right here. Uh, in particular, it's this folder. I ran some anomaly detection on several uh, well-known cybersecurity related data sets. Uh, so as for this video, it's going to be uh, some very uh, trivial methods, nothing that you would want to use in your actual job, hopefully. And this isn't going to be a good ex good explanation, but at least the code will speak for itself. So to start off with, uh, this code right here just enables uh, one cell to output multiple outputs without having to uh, use the function print. And we start off with uh, getting some normally distributed data. I used 1 million samples because, well, why not? We could have even gotten away with only 1,000 samples, realistically speaking. Uh, we use a mean of one, mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, by the way. So we plot our histogram. looks approximately normal. First method we use is the z-score. We can print the, we can pass in the thresholds, which is how many standard deviations away from mean that we want to use. Some people like to use three. Uh, this function will of course let you use whatever number that you want. So you may want to experiment with a number between maybe three to maybe four and a half. I just used a number four, but you can of course put this into a full loop and see what works with your given data. So the output, we can see that we got some outliers here and here. And so we got outliers greater than 4, and we got outliers less than negative 4. We don't see it on this plot, but we definitely see it on this plot. Anyway, so moving on, we can also use interquartile range. Basically, we have the Wikipedia that says that outliers are use 3 IQR as the decision boundary. Meanwhile, for example, the textbook that I learned basic statistics from, it used 1.5 IQR. Anyways, it doesn't really matter what number we want to use. Matter of fact, it's just a multiplier and we can once again use a, a for loop. So, to start off with a very naive uh, bounds, we can just use 1.5, but in a more practical application, we just give it the word mod we just give it a variable multiplier. We use NP dot quartiles to get Q1, Q2, and Q3, calculate the IQR, and we get our lower bound and our upper bound by the for Python. This will be upper bound, this will be lower bound. And we just return it using list comprehension syntax. Our multiplier in this case is 2.25. Once again, we could use 1.15 all the way to, so we could use 1.5 all the way to 3, 3.5, whatever you want to do. Once again, feel free to play around with this and see what works for you and what works for you and your data. Once again, we see that we have outliers in these tables, which is as expected for a normal distribution. Now, let's move on to something more practical using principal component analysis to use to detect outliers. You guys can pause the video here and read what I wrote. I mean read what I stole from the documentation. And here's a crude implementation of uh, PCA from this guy. Anyway, so moving on, we're going to use the library called PYOD to generate some data and have our principal component analysis object for outlier detection. This object is distinctly different from the one in sklearn. Anyway, so moving on, we generate our data. We specify a contamination of 0 0.01. And we have our data. We do a scatter plot. We can see what's deemed an anomaly or we can see what's deemed an outlier and for the sake of example we can just ignore this for now we're going to have our y train scores which is how much of an anomaly something is 
This we don't particularly use, but it's available in case you want to mess around with it. By the way, this plot and this plot are the same. I sort of gotten rid of the duplication. Anyways, moving on, we have our PC object. Remember, I said before that our contamination would be 0 0.01, but over here, we may not know in real life what our contamination is. So you do it for both and you see what your accuracy is. Uh, I actually did this at work and I had to actually label some data by hand or at least use my intuition of the data because in real life we have no idea what percentage of our data is an anomaly or is an outlier depending on the task you're doing. So moving on, when we specify a more correct or more true to life contamination parameter, we will get a much higher accuracy. In real life, this is an absolute pain in the ass because you do not know the ground truth in real life unless you're doing supervised learning, which is something that we rarely have in the domain of cyber security, which is where I worked. So that's PCA. Lastly, we also have, we can also apply a Z score this is like what I showed all this is exactly what I showed earlier but this is going to be in the uh, full loop and here we're just optimizing our standard deviation multiplier we can see that we enumerate through our data set and we enumerate through our row so we see go for row in data set or in x string and then we do for data point in row And we can see that we are just doing a basic standard deviation bounds. And our output is basically in first it increases up to this point, then it starts decreasing. And yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully this will point you in the right direction. This is realistically speaking not what you would do in real life. Like I said, this is just doing trivial outlier detection using basic stats. In real life, you would use uh, functions in this uh, module that I actually used in this library. Anyways, uh, good luck with whatever you're doing. I would recommend that you once again use code from here rather than this code because this code isn't in practice very useful. I just decided to take a start at making this video for the sake of my own presentation skills even though once again for the third and final time this is not what you will want to do in real life. Anyways, good luck with whatever you're doing.